All right, welcome to the Bearded Math Man's Blitz edition of Greatest Common Factors and Lowest Common Multiples. Now, this is a Blitz edition, so it's going to be very fast-paced. Uh, feel free to pause at any time, rewatch the video, and um, as always, since it's a quick review, probably not the best if you're just barely learning these topics. Now, the most important part of review is that at the end, you need to do some reflection. So, at the end of the video, I've got a couple questions for you to be answered. Now, let's go ahead and get started. Mm, before I do, though, I am remiss. If uh, you want some practice problems, and I highly suggest that you try them, you can visit the link that's in the description of the video. All right. The biggest question that you have to be able to answer, the biggest thing you have to know is what is the difference between a factor and a multiple? Now, instead of just telling you now, because... Well, if I just tell you and you don't have a chance to think about it, it's not going to really stick. So throughout the video, I want you to think about what is the difference between a factor and a multiple. And at the end, I'll see if I can help you articulate that. All right. Now, greatest common factor. Let's talk about what this means. Greatest means biggest. Common means same. And factor, well, that's a part of a product. For example, the factors of 24 are right here on the screen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. All of those numbers divide into 24. What you're going to see is a question that might say something like, what is the greatest common factor of 16 and 24? And what that means is, what's the largest number that divides into both 16 and 24 evenly? All right, well, let's take a look. Without learning any fancy steps, we can just answer this question by listing the factors of 16 and of 24. Now we're looking for the greatest, right? The greatest common factor. So that would be 8. That's the biggest factor of both numbers. A uh, common wrong answer is 4. And uh, 4 is a common factor, but it's not the greatest common factor. Uh, now, one thing that gets a little tricky for students is if these two numbers are relatively prime. What happens then? Hmm. Again, we'll discuss that at the end of the video, but as you're watching, think about it. What would be the greatest common factor of two numbers that are relatively prime? All right, now lowest common multiple. Lowest means smallest. Common, of course, is the same, and multiple means it's a factor of. So the multiples of 10 would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. So what you're going to see is a question that says, what's the lowest common multiple of 24 and 16? What that means is, what's the smallest number that both 24 and 16 divide into evenly? So no remainder. The multiples of 24 are here, and the multiples of 16 are here. When you're trying to find the lowest common multiple, you're looking for the smallest number that's in both lists. Both lists are the multiples of these two numbers. So you're looking for the smallest one, so of course it's 48. Now, some of these others, um, like 96, they are common multiples, yes, but they are not the lowest common multiple. And that's what you're looking for, the lowest common multiple. All right, now let's see if we can do this a little bit more mm, efficiently, finding lowest common multiple. So one way you can do this is you can take each number and factor, do the prime factorization of each number. And you're going to make a list, and your list is going to help you find the answer. So in your list, what you're going to do is you're going to write down all of the repeated factors. Now, we're looking for individuals. So like this over here has four twos, and this only has three. So uh, we're going to write down for each one. So for each two that is exists in both lists, we're going to put it right here. So there's the first one. Here's the second. And then here's the third they have in common. Go ahead and cross them off our list. And then now whatever is remaining... Whatever is left over in the list, we go ahead and add. So these two were the leftovers, you see? Okay, so these, th pair, this, these three numbers here were in common, and these two here are the leftovers. Now we go ahead and we take uh, our list and multiply our entire list together, and we get 48. So this right here, 48, is our lowest common multiple. Okay, now what times 24? is 48 and what times 16 is 48 and you see this is really useful because if you had to do I don't know if you had to add some fractions together and the denominators were 24 and 16 do you see how those would be related 16 times 3 24 times 2 all right now 
question again. What if they were relatively prime? What if you're asked to find the lowest common multiple of two numbers or more and they were relative primes? Hmm. Well, we're going to answer that in a few minutes as well at the end of the video. Okay, now your turn. You try. Go ahead and pause the video. Give this one a shot. Then we'll go over it. All right, let's take a look. Just like before, make a list of the prime factors of each number and then make another list where you write down what they have in common. And then whatever's left over, put it in the list, multiply it together. Boom, done. Now in our list for lowest common multiples, do you see where you can find the greatest common factor? Do you see it? It's right there, nine. Nine is the greatest common factor of 27 and 18. What they have in common is the greatest common factor. See right here, this would be, oops, this right here, this right here would be the greatest common factor. So I'm hoping you understand the difference between GCF, greatest common factor, and LCM. One thing that might help is when you see this acronym GCF, you think of greatest common factor. And when you see this acronym LCM, you're thinking lowest common multiple because the, the titles themselves are the instructions. They tell you exactly what you should be doing. So lowest common multiple and greatest common factor. Let's talk about the difference between a factor and a multiple now. So this is a really difficult thing and I've been teaching math for a long time and it's a very difficult thing to say. But I think the easiest way to think about it is that factors are dealing with smaller numbers and multiples are dealing with larger numbers. Now larger are the same, smaller or the same size. But when you're talking about factors, like the factors of 24, all of the factors except for 24 itself, all of them are smaller. When you're talking about multiples, like say the multiples of 10, all of the multiples are larger except for the number itself. So hope that helps you keep it straight in your mind. Now what about the relatively prime pairs? Like on the board here uh, on the screen I've got 6 and 25. These are relatively prime which means uh, they, they only have the common factor of one, nothing else. So the greatest common factor would be one. The lowest common multiple would actually be the product of six and 25. So that's the way it works all the time for lowest common multiples and greatest common factors of relatively prime numbers. Okay, so review questions. What did you already know? what seemed easy after you saw it again, and what's still confusing. Those are things you should think about to help make this video mm, really strengthen your understanding so that you have better recall in the future. Now, if you found this video helpful at all, you could really help me out by just clicking like and subscribe. It would encourage me to make more videos. Uh, and uh, please visit my website, thebeardedmathman.com. Share it with your friends. And uh, last thing, for some practice problems on lowest common multiples and greatest common factors, uh, see the description of the video for a link. Again, thank you for watching.